I mean, CERN is a international laboratory, which by now is building the largest experiment ever built, which is what we call the Large Hadron Collider, which is a, a, an accelerator which is built in a tunnel underground, which is 27 kilometer long. And this accelerator has two beams. And the two beams are running counterwise, and they will eat themselves at four places along the periphery of the tunnel where you have four experiments, huge experiment, to discover what happens when the two colliding protons or lead ions just uh, eat in collisions and produce a lot of particles and we hope to understand new particles which have not discovered by now will come into place. And that is the passionate work we are doing this year to finish the LHC and detectors and computing by the end of next year. CERN, perhaps you know that, was a discover, was discovering the, what we call the web, worldwide web. And that was given to the society at large and changed the society. And now we are working on a different design which enlarged the capacity of the network giving rise to, to the web by doing a platform, what we call the grid. The grid is very rapid connections, 10 gigabytes per second, a link between different laboratories in order to be able to store and analyze the results from the four experiments for the, from the LHC. We have a, it's such a large amount of data to store and analyze that we cannot even invest in CERN alone. We have to use these fast links to store with some redundancy in 11 places around the world and assume that 100 of laboratories will join this, this 11 plus CERN uh, place to ask questions to the data, ask an algorithm to be, to be done in order to get the results. And this is this what we call the Large Hadron Collider Computing Grid. And this is necessary to implement something like uh, 50,000 PC to work and something like uh, a terabyte of, uh, of uh, storage which will become petabyte. Petabyte means something huge which is almost 1% of the total information available in one year in the world. You know that uh, for the last 50 years particle physicists have been working by exchanging their results, exchanging, exchanging and criticizing the publication of one of the authors by all others. And for that, after we have left the paper-bound business to go to electronic version through the web, I think we have agreed to have a few archive points. One is in Cornell, very well known. Another one is in CERN, which we call the CERN document server. And through this uh, place, everybody working in the discipline can have access to the document and make comments on it. That means instead of using only conference to, to discuss the content of a, a results from experiment, this is going on all the time through having direct access to the preprint and discussing that, and which sometimes lead to a change in the paper. It's improved, and after that it's published. It's given to publications through a publisher company. And, uh, but we know that this last step, which is to go to a publisher, which costs a lot, because I think all laboratories to have access to the last version of the document, which has been peer-reviewed, I think we'll have to pay for subscription. And I think the author don't like that, because they assume open access on all the results will be better. And that's why we are looking at the possibility to really uh, <coughs> have a, a complete access on peer review guarantee document as a final step. I think for this uh, going to a new scheme of publication, instead of having the conventional subscription paid by readers, I think we are trying to go to another scheme where the author or the laboratory employing them or university will pay for the publications, which in essence 
they should reach exactly the same goal because there is no inherent uh, facts which don't allow one against the others. That's why we are working the last years through publisher and the funding agencies and laboratory to see if a new business model can be put in place. We understand that publishers like to continue their business. They don't like to be deprived of their revenue. That's why they have a duty, this is a service to the reader, but we should agree on something which will be useful for the author also. Authors like to have the largest audience as possible in order to have an impact on the society, an impact on physics, and so on. That's why, by now, we are assuming that after a task force which has been built between authors, funding agency, and publisher, this year, the beginning of the year, we have ended with a proposal which means we need a transition period to go from the present scheme, conventional one, subscription-based, to author paying for their, their publications. And it looks like this transition period cannot be done without sponsoring the publisher. And we assume that CERN has a good leading position in order to have many funding agencies, many large laboratories joining to build a consortium, which will give some pressure on the publisher, but also will have the possibility to to guarantee some revenue for a few years in order to, to prepare for a, a, a slow or transition to a new scheme, which I hope, after a few years, will be alone uh, recognized as viable, sustainable, and publisher and all others will be happy for a win-win solution. The, the particle physics community is, has very strong links. This is not so much researcher working at home in separate. They are very often joining by thousands on one experiment. That's why the process of having preprint already archived and discussed and having this new scheme allows the transition period perhaps to be most effective because of the community, because of the number of publishers which are limited, uh, which are involved in particle physics publication. That's why I think the the process of having a transition period through a consortium of laboratory, consortium of authors, to go to publisher, I think is a solution which I see could be successful in a few years. I think most publishers have recognized that the statu quo cannot remain as, as it is. That's why from the beginning of this year we have seen a lot of publishers trying to move from, their pres from the present system to some open access with limits with which, which is, are easy to, to understand because they have to protect their business. Uh, we understand that. But what we try to do is to try to have a, a enough pressure from enough authors at once. And there's a, there's a publisher that gives some hope of success because if you assume the change by individuals, that will never happen. I think this is very important that the funding agencies and university, which is similar role, recognize that at the end, for them, for their cost, it should be neutral. But they should recognize a principle, which is paying for publications to be as a large audience as possible is a part of the research. Not, not a very large part, this is a few percent. But I mean, they should recognize that this is the best way, not to support library, which will buy books and journals, but to support the researcher to really pay for their publication. And after that, everybody should be happier. <laughs>